Uh, after that worship time, and uh, also after that special music, Jesus, Friends of Sinners, uh, I would much rather be talking to you about what I'm about to speak in next hour, the ABF hour I'm filling in uh, for Pastor Ron Jones and his class, and uh, looking at Nicodemus. Uh, I didn't get the lesson plan for the ABF normal hour, but uh, going to Nicodemus and just sharing about him, would love to open up scriptural truth, just feel led to do that after, after such a, a good time coming before God. However, we are finishing up our Church Matters series uh, today content-wise, and, and so um, I've been asked uh, to cover with you some details on that. Your questions have been coming in uh, through text and also uh, coming in through uh, paper form. Feel free to do that again today. Uh, we will take those and respond back to them. Um, at this point, uh, what we're going to do is cover content today. Pastor Paul is coming as well. And uh, next week is Father's Day, and so that uh, special day, uh, we will have no church matters, nothing connected to it. And then the week following, we'll come back and answer uh, your questions on that Sunday. So due to um, this, just if you're newer here, um, coming in again this Sunday or coming back, haven't been here in a few Sundays, uh, normally this is not the normal teaching style that we do here at Faith. Uh, we are expository, opening up God's Word, teaching through it. Uh, however, once a year, we take a series like this Church Matters series and desire to bring to you vision, uh, bring to you content of what is going on a little bit behind the scenes and moving forward with future vision. So that's what's being done even today. Within our Church Matters, this content especially, I mean, we've covered the vision, reaching people far from Christ, teaching them to follow Jesus. We've walked through uh, some main points that we desire to see us as leadership and you as a church take, as in grow, pray, connect, reach, those of you that were here for that teaching. Uh, we did look um, into just what God's been doing through outreaching um, within the community, within people that are coming in here, making this a place that people feel like they belong when they come in. Uh, in that we desire to lead them, of course, uh, through God's word to belief, um, and that God would in turn change their behavior. So we've, we've talked through uh, just some of that content. This specific content that I'm about to share with you is really behind the scenes. But yet it is something that we as pastors feel we want to share with you and then, and then tell you kind of an explanation of how this will function and how it will work itself out. We have developed um, and desire to develop an organizational culture uh, within our church. What we mean by that um, is that it will start with our leadership. We recognize that within faith there are some areas that we desire to do better and to make better, uh, a lot of it behind the scenes with how we function. And so we're going to be looking at uh, some behaviors that we desire to develop, and we just kind of define this. Uh, this is developing organizing culture, creating questions that will inspire leadership and the church to function well. We desire to facilitate our leadership and strengthen our church through these behaviors. These will be implemented over the next several years. And so within our um, church, Just one back. There we go. There are uh, behaviors, and this is what we're really talking about uh, that we desire to see structurally happen uh, within each of our church environments. What's created in the children's ministry, what's created within worship, uh, within our connections team, senior saints ministry, ABF hour, this worship hour, our preaching, and the, it could just continue to go that we have a behaviors or format that we're looking to uh, work through. And what we're looking to do is, for one, evaluate. Something that we have not been very strong at doing is to evaluate each of the ministries and that we as pastoral leadership would take this and start evaluating each area and then be able to hand that over to those that are actually running certain areas to evaluate that themselves. The question that we kind of put together for this is within evaluation, how am I assessing my area of service and allowing others to scrutinize it? Are we hearing feedback? 
Are we assessing and moving forward with what we are doing? Are we looking back at what has been done and has been accomplished and how it was accomplished? Through that, we desire to elevate or eliminate. So what am I doing to help us improve our church and ministry within whatever ministry we're really talking about? How can I make it better is a key question. So everything that we're doing and everything that we're doing within each of our ministries, it's a desire to look at it and to say, how can I make this better? How can we make our worship environment better? How can we make our connections to those that are coming in better? Our children's ministries better? Senior saints, ABF, better? What can we do to to make it? Are we thinking in that way or are we just fine with where we are? How can we make it better? Or, come to the end, should we continue this ministry after an evaluation? Within that, we want to communicate. So communicate, how am I going to convey this information to whoever needs to know, whether up front in church, uh, whether we, children's ministry to parents, how are we going to do that? Clearly, proper channels ahead of time and multiple times so that multiple touches are able to be done. And then last thing is something that we really have not done as a church many times. We, we, and we've done some wonderful, great programs, great things that we have done, and uh, God has worked in great ways through us, and then we just move on to the next thing, never coming back to it. So for instance, you know, we, we have soccer camps and Easter egg hunts, and we had a vacation Bible time here last year. We have... Zach, who is on the mission field, coming back. What are we doing to celebrate what God is actually doing? And so in this, we want to have each of us looking at the different ministries and say, what am I doing to celebrate my areas of ministry? How can God be praised to bring it back? To bring it back to you, to bring it back as a church, and to recognize what God has done. So within this, uh, one area of ministry, it's because I oversee it, so it was very easy to do, um, and because I really had a desire to get into this one specifically, uh, was evaluated. So we went through these steps, in other words, within this Connections Team, Connections Ministry. So what we were able to do in our evaluation, I've shared a few of these numbers with you and uh, shared them with the deacons and and that sort of thing, but just to kind of show you what we're looking to do in evaluation. We had 70 guests over this last year, that's April to April, uh, come through, 47 adults, 23 kids. Average age, based off of a decade scale of people coming through is 32. 50% have children's school age, of uh, visitors, guests that are coming in. 56% are looking for a new church. Of the 56%, and by the way, what I'm meaning by that and how I do that is right on the sheets that are in front of you, uh, people fill them out. And they always put on the bottom there the section, what brought you to faith? And some of them say, well, it was Jane Doe invited me, so I came out. And they might put that on there. But many times it's on there, I'm just looking for a new church or I am um, searching for Uh, experiencing Jesus and understanding scripture, understanding truth. 56% looking for a new church. 32% do not attend a Christian church. And that's the the number I had shared with you a few weeks ago. 40% of people that have come in have been invited by a person from faith, from you. And and, uh, so they, they come in through your invitation and 12% are FCA contacts through the school uh, daycare uh, that we currently have in this building. So evaluation. Evaluation is done, and so then the next step that we're looking to do is how to make it better, how to elevate. What do we need to do to take some of those next steps? So within here, um, a few big numbers to share with you, and, and that is our guest return rate. How many units come back a second time? And that's 70%. So 70% of the people coming through come back again a second one. That's a really, really big number. They say if you're at 50%, you're a growing church. In other words, people are actually looking at your ministry and saying, okay, there is 
Something there that I want and that I need or that I recognize they have truth, they have relationships, and, and they're able to come and uh, search to come back. Guest retention rate, how many units stay with us past six months? And that's 56%. So again, a very high number, um, and that's how I get to you, the connection here to 200% over the growing rate. The growing rate uh, within your guest retentions are 20%. So if you're able to have 20% of the guests coming through your church, this is done on a church level, church-wide throughout the United States, if you have 20% of people um, that are staying with you past six months, you are a growing church. So they look at these two numbers, your retention rate, but also your return rate. Are people coming back initially? Are they staying with you? So in other words, you are doing a fantastic job greeting people, welcoming people. There is truth here that people are able to find. I think of those ladies that are out there in the lobby each week greeting people, welcoming them in, those that are handing out coffee out there just with a smile on their face, all the ushers that we have opening up the door as people come in, the, the guys standing in the parking lot just welcoming as they come through, and so the emphasis that you as a church and that as a Connections team has been able to be placed on this, we've been able to see God work through it and able to see retention and growth come because of it. Even just in the last eight weeks, and I know I brought six weeks to you, let's just go to eight weeks, 15 units, 41 guests. Did you catch that? Because over a year's time it was 70, just in a short eight-week time period, 41. And this summertime is where even more people come through, July and August, according to past numbers. So again, just evaluation. Through the evaluation, let's look at how we want to elevate. So then we go to the next step within this, within elevation. For one, in, in through this evaluation, we looked at it, and, and I just easily said, wow, we're missing some people. Uh, some people are coming through. The 70 guests that I mentioned are those that filled out sheets. Some come through and don't fill them out. So how can we get it better in their hands? That's when we switch to having everything in the seat back. Uh, so we still hand them out, but it's actually giving it to guests as they, it's in every seat back. There's, there's no way you couldn't have gotten one, and uh, we have them there. Next step that we need to take, pens need to be in each one of the seat backs. Just simple things, just through evaluation. How else can we elevate it? I mentioned this. Uh, and in the know last week, we desire to put Bibles in each one of the seat backs as well that can be taken uh, by those who come in that don't have one or need a new one. Or, and I've had this before, what? What? I have a King James Bible. What version is your pastor using? So we'll put an ESV Bible in each one of the seat backs there that can be used and taken as well. Uh, desire to finish the Connections Welcome Center. Uh, so that was set up there in the foyer. We already have several things for materials to be used. Instead of having stuff put out on desks, we desire for a new Welcome Center to be out there. Uh, we've been talking through that. Also, uh, just on the back wall, having brochures and other things put up on the wall, calendars uh, to be able to be displayed in that way. So again, just uh, feedback to how to make it even better. One step that one church does, which will be very profitable for us, is sending out an email for feedback from those that are guests. So right now, the follow-up, we send out a letter to them, we connect through them through email, but to actually have feedback from them on their service, uh, something to the point of, what stood out to you today? What was something that was a blessing to you today? What is an area that we could work on as a church? Again, these views from the people coming in as guests are very healthy to hear and hear back. And the last thing, through evaluating it and really a desire to, to elevate it, is the obvious next step is for us to work in and to have the discipleship process. Looking at what our church was several years ago, six, seven years ago, through a discipleship team, Pastor Tim Kuhn really was leading, 
uh, the discipleship process was getting into your hands, not just pastors meeting with people. It was you meeting with people and discipling them and working with them. That is a major emphasis and a desire for this coming year, 2014 into 15. That cycle, that development is what's going to be coming underway within the connections areas, that discipleship process to take place. As 32% come from a non-Christian church or don't go to church at all, we're just seeing a lot of people that need to have that discipleship process come through. So then there's communication. Create processes and also then communicate to the leadership staff, connections team itself, and so we'll be having a meeting working through some of this material, and also then, of course, the whole church uh, as well, just within what's going on. And then celebrate it. Communication to the whole church of what God has been doing. Numbers are a great thing from this standpoint, just to give us a picture of what God's been doing. Video testimonies is one area that we said that we could elevate this. We could hear some video testimonies, as I have the joy of sitting with many people week after week, um, whether doing lunch, whether doing breakfast with them, just saying, what brought you to faith? Tell me about your past history and your background, and, and sharing with them and hearing with them what they're looking for. Um, I get to do that, but I want you as a church, to be able to hear some of those. To be able to see all the members come up is great, and we shake their hand and welcome them, but some of these testimonies, guys, are amazing for us to be able to hear. So within this 2014-15 area, uh, that video testimony is one thing we desire to do, whether in the service or definitely, as it says on here, putting it on our website, that we'll be able to have a connection on that. I know our our website uh, communications team already has mentioned a desire to do that as well. So within our church, that is a picture of what our evaluation, elevating, or looking at something and eliminating it, shouldn't be part of it here, communicating it, and then also celebrating what God is doing. So you can just see, taking those those behaviors, moving it then into children's ministry, moving it then into our ABF, moving it into other areas of ministry, saying, let's see what we're doing, let's evaluate it, let's celebrate what God is doing, And that's a desire that we have coming up and how we're going to look to do that as well. Pastor Paul? Thank you, Paul. I hope that excites you. This uh, past year, we've just seen God do some incredible stuff here, faith. It's, it's, It's been exciting to be a part of, not just tell you from a personal point of view, from an ABF class point of view. Uh, We, we, uh, last year started an impact class uh, impact ABF, and it's just been unbelievable what God's doing. I wish I could stand here and just tell you the things that have taken place and what's been happening and the new people that God has sent through our way. It's just been exciting to see, and I hope you're excited about what God's doing in our church, and hope you'll continue to be. I want to kind of close this out. We'll come back and do a Q&A, but I want to kind of close out our Church Matter series and kind of just give you a personal challenge, because I think every one of us here this morning need to be involved in this mission. And I think every one of us can be involved in this mission to own it and to be a part of it and say, what's my part in it? For me personally, I just love meeting people and just seeing God open up opportunities. Had it happen the other day again, came out of the restaurant. We were with the Elevate group the other day, Mike. Our, our deacon team met our, down at the Keystone yesterday. I walked out, and there was a whole group of people out there. I thought, what in the world's going on here? And I find out here there's a class of 71 from Penn Ridge High School. They were all people that I went to high school with. And they were older than me. Thank the Lord for that. But uh, Richie Roberts and a bunch of other kids that I knew from high school, Jerry Moore that played basketball and, was, you know, Guts, Tom Gillian, all this, just people I knew from high school. And I ended up there for another half hour just talking to people, and they found out I'm a, pa- a pastor. As soon as they find out I was a pastor, it changes the whole dynamic of the conversation. But it opens it up for spiritual things. That's what I enjoy the most, getting out and meeting people. Maybe you don't. So what's your part? Because I think every one of us have a part, and I'd like to just give you a challenge this morning that all of us can be involved in this mission through prayer. And I want to take you, here's what A.T. Pearson said a number of years ago. He said, every believer, every believer who 
with the key of faith unlocks God's mysteries, and with the key of prayer unlocks God's treasuries. Thus furnishes the human race demonstration and illustration of the fact that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. One of the things my dad taught all the time was this, nothing of spiritual value ever is accomplished without prayer. No one is going to come to Christ through us without our willingness to make personal sacrifices to see that happen. We've been going through Jonah. You know what it cost Jonah for the sailors to see the living God? He got tossed overboard. When Jonah got tossed overboard, the realization hit the guys on the ship, there is a living God. So there's an element at which we have to sacrifice and we have to exert ourselves and we have to be intentional. And one of the areas that we need to be intentional about is praying for people as a part of this mission. And I think this is something that every single one of us in this auditorium today can do, must do, should do. And I want to challenge you in the year coming up, 1415, when we start in September and kick off a new year, I want to challenge you to say this is a year when we really emphasize taking people to prayer and making part of our praying, praying that the mission will be accomplished through Faith Baptist Church. Now, Timothy talks about this, and he says this in 1 Timothy. It says, first of all, then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, thanksgiving be made for all people. For kings and all who are in high positions. We certainly need to do that, don't we? Could say for us, for presidents and all who are in high positions. We ought to be praying for them. That we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good and is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at a proper time. For this I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. I desire then that in every place men should pray, lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling. Now, I challenge you to this, and let me just walk you through this a little bit to kind of put an end to this. Evangelistic prayer is not merely standing in an indifferent way, coldly advocating the salvation of some for whom we have very little compassion. But it is this. By the Holy Spirit, having fallen into the depth of their own anxiety and pain and feeling with sympathy that situation, we cry out to God with familiarity for those whom we have great feeling. In other words, pray for those you care about. And there are people that God has put into every one of your lives whose lives are broken like ours, who need God's grace. Because God's grace is the only thing that can fix a broken, sinful life. It's the only cure. But this passage calls us to prayer in this. An authentic church has a vibrant prayer ministry that's focused on the mission. So we don't just come and pray, God, bless Faith Baptist Church. Please don't pray that way. God, we pray that you'd use Faith Baptist Church to reach this individual who you put in our path. We need to be more specific in the way we pray. And, and we need to, to, to get names down of people that you know and just begin to pray for their salvation. And they may never know you're praying for their salvation. Now, in this passage, he gives a couple things. Supplication. Let me just give you these ideas quick. It, the supplication means this. It means to see the need and have an awareness 
in someone's life. I know what's taken place in a certain person's life, and when I know that situation and I know that difficulty, then, then that's entering into supplication because you're, you're kind of getting in there saying and pleading for an individual who's going through something that may be very difficult to go through. Thus I pray because a need exists and I see needs. And I'll tell you, if you just begin to get involved in the lives of people, you're going to become aware of specific needs that exist in your life. And when you become aware of those specific needs in your life, that's what you target in prayer. And that's what, say, Lord, I'm just going to bring this to you. And that's called supplication because I see the need that exists. And I pray because there is a need in an individual's life who I am aware of, who I know. And so I'm going to take that to God on their behalf. And they may never know you're doing it. Watch what God does. He talks then in this passage about prayers. Prayer is simply this. It's communication with God. I love prayer. I used to think prayer, you know, I used to think this, and this, this is a little bit of change in my theology. I used to think the only way that God spoke was through his word. But I'm convinced he speaks through his spirit through prayer. It's always consistent with his word. It never violates his word. But I'll tell you, there is communion that goes back and forth in my life with God. And there are times when it's just, a, you know, it's like my wife, supposing that I just didn't talk to my wife and she never talked back. That'd be the weirdest situation ever. We have communication, my wife and I, as it goes back and forth with each other. And it, it doesn't happen where I say, now, wife, sit down. I got 15 minutes. We're going to have a conversation this morning for 15 minutes. This is it. This is all you're going to get today. 15 minutes designed. Now, let's talk for 15 minutes. We get done those 15 minutes. See you tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. <laughs> How's that work out for your prayer life? That's not prayer. Prayer is an ongoing conversation, like with my wife and I, throughout the course of the day. It's communication that goes back and forth. That's what God does in your life through prayer. It's ongoing throughout the course of the day. You talk to him all the time. And I'm convinced he talks to you. One of the ways he talks to me is, is, is through music. The other day, we were just in our house. We have music on all the time, most of the time. And one of the songs that comes on periodically that I love is, Be Still My Soul. The Lord is on your side. Be still? What is that? Be still, my soul. The Lord's on your side. He'll take care of you. Quiet your heart. That's communication. And so prayer is worship, expressing my relationship to God, dependence upon him, and my petition, recognizing the necessity of his work in the heart of those needing salvation. Thus this, I pray because I am totally dependent on God. I can't save anybody. Guys, I can't even accurately all the time represent Christianity. I can't answer all the questions I get asked. <laughs> I can search for the answers, but sometimes I'm in situations where people ask me questions, I'm, that's a good question. I'll go find that answer for you. Then I have to go search, and I have to pray, because as you talk to different people who are on different levels, and you get into conversations, sometimes you just have to say, Lord, I need your help to be able to do this, and I pray because I realize what I can't do and I realize my dependence on God, and that's why you pray. So I could never teach a Sunday school lesson. Yeah, you're right. I could never. Uh, you're right. Kind of like what Pastor Doug said this morning earlier, you know, is, is the situations bigger than yourself? Sure they are. But God's bigger than every situation you ever face, and there's, a, there's an answer to the questions that people have. And so we pray. Let me give you this concept, intercession. Intercession is this is brokenness over the need. And what happens here, I pray because my heart is broken over the lostness of people. You see people who are just, you know, really dealing with issues in their life that are difficult, difficult issues to have to deal with. And you begin to see that. And it leads you to pray. And what you do is you begin to intercede because you see not only the need, but it, it, it's broken your heart to see it. 
And I think that's the secret of relationships because if you don't have relationship, you don't get, I don't know that you can get to intercession without relationships. Because what are you going to intercede for and who are you going to intercede for if you don't know what's going on in a person's life, you don't know the brokenness of the situation, you don't know the hardship they're going through. If we're unaware of what's taking place, how do we even get to the point of intercession? Because intercession is the brokenness that happens when you get in between that tremendous need that exists in that person's life and the God who can resolve that issue. And so there needs to be people that you're interceding for. Kind of standing in the gap saying, God. And then Thanksgiving, he ends this up in his passions, and that's this, all praise to God. Thus I pray because I want God to be the recipient of all the glory. I've always had this fear as an individual and as a church that not me getting the glory not me, not you. Not even our church getting the glory. You know what people should think? When people see our church, you know what they should say? That church really needs a savior. Because <laughs> then we can say we have one. If somebody looks at our church and says, man, they've got it all together, then I don't know that we're sending the right message because has anybody in here got it all together? Does our church ever get it all together? Or are we more a group of sinners striving by the grace of God to be what God wants us to be and simply obey him? So when you look at our church, you should say, boy, without a savior, that thing's a disaster. Mm-hmm. You got it right. And if, if this church, as, as we begin to see God do things, and this church, is, as it begins to con and continues to move now, saying, boy, I, and I love the organizational stuff, I'm all for it, but it's not organization that builds a church, it's God that builds his church. And what needs to take place is we don't boast about our church and we don't brag about our church because there's always things in our church that make it look not so good. But we can brag about our Savior because he's awesome, and that's what needs to be seen. And I think that's what Paul's talking about. And my computer just shut down. So I'm going to shut down. To God be the glory great things he hath done, and to God be the glory, great things he is doing, right? And we pray that that will continue. So we need you to say this. I'm going to be involved in the mission through prayer. And we need you to specifically to begin to pray for individuals that God puts in your path. And I'll tell you, if there's two individuals that each of us are praying for, then we've got about 600 individuals covered right here that we can begin to go out and say, God, help us. And you watch what God does as we begin to make the sacrifices to do this and pray and then do what we can to make the sacrifices, try to get them the gospel. Watch what God does. And then we'll come back and do what Paul said. We'll celebrate to God be the glory. Great things he hath done. And he does do great things. It's amazing. It's amazing. Let's pray. Oh, whoa, don't pray. Got a video. And uh, we're going to take a summer series this week, this year. We always do a summer Bible conference. Not a summer Bible conference this year. But we're going to do a summer series with you. And we want to show you a little video on it. Within the course of life, you will encounter different journeys, journeys of success and triumph, to journeys of failure and defeat. No two journeys are the same, but one thing is true. Everyone is on a journey somewhere. The question is, where will your journey lead you?
the first week of July, we're going to begin to uh, go through um, 2 Samuel, and uh, we're going to hit parts of the reign of King David, and we're going to follow his journey and uh, the different journeys that he takes. And so uh, next week, we're going to have some postcards available for you, and one of the things we're going to ask you to do is just uh, hand those out and invite people out. Uh, This uh, series is intended to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus and point people to the gospel as uh, we just uh, see how God did that with David in his reign and through his successes, through his failures through his consequences, um, just an amazing, powerful, incredible journey that God sent David through as he was working his redemptive plan in the nation of Israel at that time. And so we're really excited to take uh, six weeks this summer and uh, beginning in in July and and walk through the journey. So just a challenge to uh, invite people out. We're going to share the gospel. We're going to share Christ, and we're going to share hope. Um, And so we're looking really uh, forward to that, and we're excited about that.